Hello traders, it's Tuesday, January the 9th. This is John Kickle, editor Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. Here with a quick take video in which we're going to concentrate specifically on the EURUSD. I've been talking a lot about this currency cross over the past week, weeks, uh, and my interests are both very big picture, but also very short duration. Uh, and that's because we're in the midst of technical and fundamental imbalance, which really draws that extreme contrast. Uh, we're starting to see some of the short-term unwind play out, which is actually very appropriate for our current market conditions, which I believe are much more oriented towards looking for uh, brief rebalancing interest rather than the true committed breakout or trend development world. So taking a look at the Euro USD, let's just do a very quick uh, review of the short term. If I take this down to a um, two hour chart, you can see that we did tentatively turn a very uh, moderate, very lackluster or low level technical term or, or uh, setup. This is not very robust, uh, but that's not what it's meant to be. Uh, breaking the floor of that 120, 20, 120, 20, uh, is only a, a, a low boundary in terms of technical analysis. And that's exactly what it should be. Because the alternative, a break to the upside, which uh, you have to go on a daily chart or higher to really appreciate, is far more significant. Breaking to the upside or clearing 121 would insinuate that we clear the swing high from September of 2017, which is itself the highest reading that we've seen since way back here in, in the beginning of 2015, which if we go even further, if I take it up to a monthly chart and get the entire history of the Euro USD, there is a midpoint of the low set in 2000 to the high set in 2008 at 121.30, 121.35. Taking it down to a weekly chart, we also had coincide with a uh, range of the 2014 swing high to current that actually brings up a midpoint of 121.75. That is collectively a very important, very influential technical resistance. That is not something you simply meander through, stroll right by without uh, any kind of reference to uh, commitment. No, that requires something far more tangible, something much more fundamental, and that's not something that we actually have. All right, so this was a noteworthy uh, correction in that it actually follows the path least resistance, which is much more appropriate to the conditions that we're currently trading. But let's take it a step further on a technical basis. Let's actually look at the difference uh, between the two currencies. Now it's hard to do because the Euro USD is the most liquid currency out there. So what we can instead do is uh, take a look at a equally weighted dollar index so we minimize the influence of the euro usd and just look at the dollar so here you can see that the dollar is not really marking any kind of substantial change so if the dollar has something to do let's say in the dollar yen pound dollar aussie usd it has yet to actually achieve it it's starting to put some uh, moderation on its tumble that is not a turn now the alternative the euro index very different this is an equally weighted Euro-based Euro uh, index of all the majors. And as you can see, there is a very clear distinctive trend channel here that we have broken with this past session. Although, if this is our litmus test, there is a nice head and shoulders pattern here at about the 136 as it falls on this synthetic. So maybe not full commitment, but that's not what the markets are about. The question that I have is whether the path of least resistance is actually facilitating a little bit more follow through into this broader range or whether it is just as tight as the 119.75 to 121.75 range. That would be a very, very tight range and that would inevitably lead to a much more definitive break. But the path of least resistance is much more appropriate for what we can actually see on the horizon. So the important thing here is whether we can clear these previous swing highs at about the one, uh, the 119.50, 119.60 level. All right, that would be path of least resistance playing out now. The alternative is build up more of the range that you have down to 119.50, maybe up to 121.75, and that would insinuate a bigger break later on. So the, the thing is, the EURUSD, the, the correction that we have here, really doesn't have a lot of fundamental backing. 
On the euro side, we actually had a very impressive run of data. Uh, the German coalition government uh, talks seem to be going well. Strong sentiment uh, figures from investors and consumer and economic uh, measures. Uh, on the U.S. side, it was uh, decent. I wouldn't make this green, but consumer credit was a record high. Um, I think that's just greater risk. Fed speak was generally hawkish, but uh, Bostic from the Atlanta Fed was a little bit more dovish than perhaps was anticipated. Hasn't uh, curbed interest rate expectations from Fed funds futures, but uh, not necessarily very substantial for supporting the dollar, uh, nor was the data or any comments aligned to the more abrupt movement of the day. And what is very interesting is that there is some very high contrast in some some of the shorter and longer duration speculative interests. So the long-term speculative interests, you're looking at the COT report. These are weekly updates. And here is EURUSD COT net speculative interest amongst large speculative futures traders. This is actually a new high as of last week, which happens to be a record high. So record net long. Note where the highs are in speculative interest and note where the highs are in the euro usd price action there seems to be a contrast in the highs of price and a consistency and then now a new record high in speculative bearing all right a little bit of a divergence there certainly worth noting and we can also look at the shorter duration that is weekly and fundamental or sorry uh, futures this is uh, retail and uh, spot you can see in this client positioning statistics that we have on daily FX that uh, with this pullback, a lot of the net short interest had actually retreated. In fact, there was some significant dip buying as well, but still heavily net short. So really contrarian against the euro USD's push higher um, while the futures market is really supportive of it and thinks it's going to clear 121 with some ease and gusto. We'll see who wins, but I still think it's path of least resistance. Keep an eye on this pair, a lot of potential, and a lot of trading interest. We'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next quick take video tomorrow. Until then, I wish you all good luck trading out there.